Hallelujah. If you're at Psalms 34, say amen. amen. How many has a little heading there that lets you know that's the Psalm of David when he changed his behavior? Brother Aaron, what does yours say? Read it loud. Give me that Aaron voice. Pretty good. Um, what, what, what did David do? You'll do the right thing in the right situation for the right reason. What you come here to do tonight? Fulfill an obligation? Let's read this. Now that you know the heading of why this says what it says, those of you that are twice dead, plucked up by the roots, you know how many of you don't even know what that means? But we've been saying around apostolic Pentecostal churches my whole entire time. But it basically just means the walking dead existed long before that ridiculous TV show. You're just walking around, doing what you do. There's no real life in you. David changed his behavior because the situation warranted, and I'm telling you tonight, the situation warrants some of us to change our behavior. I will bless the Lord at all times, except some of you when I don't feel like it. When I just don't feel God's been good enough to me. Or, you know, I've, I've ascended to a level in my walk with God that I don't need to worship him no more. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I, 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 I kind of think Thumper's mom had a clue in here. I'm going to interject Sister Thumper. If you can't say anything good, Okay, so in other words, if you got good coming out of your mouth, all that other junk won't be there. I know that'll help everybody in here. It'll help me. Now, some of you, that's not, yeah, it's you. Can everybody say that's me? You might get something out of this tonight if you're, are you hearing what I'm saying? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. That's going to let you know the kind of people listen to your witness and your testimony. That's right. That's right. See, the, the, the prideful aren't going to hear me tonight. This ain't going to do a bit of good for the prideful. Yeah. That egomaniac, that arrogant person, I can't help them. But the humble are here, going to hear it tonight, and they'll be glad with what I'm about to preach. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. When you gather together, it's to exalt his name. That's why we're here. I don't have to break out of the source and encyclopedia. I don't need to exegete the, the text. It's pretty simple. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together I just I just want to speak to you on the simple topic subject idea of let us exalt his name together that's why we're here <laughs> you see it ain't whether you have a need or not I it's to come to exalt him, to magnify, to lift up, to praise, to worship. Let me help you. If you come to judge my sermon, my message, my thought, you, you're, you're not even in the building. Your body is, your carcass is. Are you hearing me? Let's pray. Jesus, we need your help. We need a divine unction as we do a divine reset in our spirituality, in our walk with you, Lord, that we get our cleanse out our minds and our hearts and our spirits and be renewed that we would walk with you, Lord, talk with you and know you and hear again your voice uh, with clarity. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated.
Psalms 33 and 3. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud voice. There's permission to sing new music around here. Yes, there is. Of course, you just leave the stuff that sounds good on the radio out. That's a personal plug from pastor. If it sounds good on the radio, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good for the church. Thank you. It's just how it's going to be. Psalm 66 and 1. Make a joyful noise. Some of you need to go and understand what this meaneth. <laughs> Let's say make a negative noise, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Anybody here want to step out and take a shot at making a joyful noise? That's the will of God right there. Hold on. Now, that got a little stinky because we're like, what? Now? No, next week. Yes. That's why we're here. I, even while preaching, I don't mind someone worshiping God and saying, amen, get with that. Wait, wait a minute. See, 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 say, well, that's, that's kind of awkward. That's kind of weird. Oh, really? But it's okay for 80,000 fans to jump up and scream to a dude down on the field that he don't know nothing about him, ain't thinking about him, he's thinking about that check and catching that ball as he runs at the end zone. And you're going to all yell for him to cheer him on? But you're not, it's weird to exalt God? <laughs> when you put it that way, the thing is, is the problem is I had to put it that way. Where's your love, adoration, and honor? I'm going to put it that way for God. I'm going to keep every thought and bring it under subjection so that I know that I'm exalting his name together with who? The church. He's coming back for a church. You realize you can exalt his name together when you're all by yourself in a prison cell? There's the whole world over. There are people praising and worshiping God. It's wonderful to gather together with a, with, with a bunch of church. That's great. But you can still do it together when you're all by yourself. Because it's it's a lifestyle. It's it's a decision. It's if you have to, turn, you should do this at home. How can you teach your children to pray if they never see you pray? How can you teach them to worship if you only worship here and not at home? They think, okay, this is two. Psalms ninety five, two verses. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Wow, we ought to worship. We ought to thank God. That it ought to just be what we do. And it's just not an Old Testament thing. Romans. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Anybody looking at that verse right now? L-A-U-D? You know what that word means? You know what, where we get that word? Applaud. Loud clapping. Everybody say noise. Make a joyful noise. We are supposed to get loud. <laughs> Philippians 4. Understand that what we're doing here, it's, it's not, in fact, the world stole praise, singing, worship, and turned it to something disgusting. We're supposed to dance before the Lord, not do the boogie woogie with someone you don't know. Philippians 4 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. So what's really with all the noise in church? Well, you have to understand, and, and it, I can ask the question coming from my historical raising. I, I was raised in what was called a Catholic home. We're going to church, and 
Being involved with God was more like going to the cemetery. It's getting you ready to be shoved in a box and put six foot under the ground. You walk in and they call it reverence. They call it, you know, piousness. And they want you to come in and be reverent because there's a priest. So what's with all the noise? And in fact, you go there and I, I know stories of people that, that got the Holy Ghost in a service where we don't do that here. And they've kicked them out. You can't get loud. You're getting too loud in here. Did I just read a bunch of verses out of the Bible? How many believes what I just read out of the Bible? So can the world shut you up? I hope not. So what's with all the noise? Rejoice, rejoicing and worship is to be cheerful. It's to make happy. And, and the, the best animated way to put it to you, it's the difference between Eeyore and Tigger. If you came in as Eeyore, you better leave as Tigger. If you came in as Tigger, you better live as Tigger. Does God want his people to rejoice? Without a doubt. In fact, the first time we ever see that word rejoice in the Bible, it's actually Old Testament. Exodus and then Jethro rejoiced for all the good which the Lord had done for Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. You need to rejoice because God delivered you from the world. If you stay excited that God delivered you from something, it's hard to go back to that something. Psalms 25, we will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. And may the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Psalms 33, rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise from the, from the upright is beautiful. Psalms 105 and 3, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. When you walk into a Pentecostal service, when you walk into Souls Harbor, you got a worship leader asking you, lift up your voice, sing this with us, join us, clap your hands. You got a pastor encouraging you, make a joyful noise and stand your feet. Let's worship him. Let's magnify the Lord. People come walking in. Why are the church people so exuberant in worship? Why are they praising and singing? Because it's what God likes. It's what a joyful heart does. It's what people that are saved and have a walk with God do. But, but understand, there are some common responses that those unfamiliar with Pentecostal church services have when attending one of our services. These are fair questions when asked with the right attitude. Why do we lift our voice? Why are, to we, why are we to get loud? Why are we to become exuberant? And why are we to get outside of ourselves and making sure we make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Why do we clap? Why do we shout? Why do we make an effort to raise the volume of worship and raise our voices in the congregation? And then why do we push for a unified effort? Well, let's find out. Let's, let's see what it says. So let, let, let's back it up a little bit. You see, in the temple, there was a court for the Gentiles, a court for the Jewish women, a court for the Jewish men. Each court was a little closer to the Holy of Holies and thereby closer to the Lord. But there was only so far you could go. There's only so far you could go as a Gentile woman, as a man or as a priest. And then only the high priest got to enter the Holy of Holies, and then only once a year. But all those barriers were broken down when Jesus went to the cross. God tore 
the curtain to the Holy of Holies. He rent the veil and released and gave access. Everybody say access to the Holy Spirit and presence of God. And so now that we have access, uh, we get excited. We want to enter into his presence. We, we want to walk into his glory. We, we want to rejoice. Hallelujah. Overflow with joy. I never could have got here if it wasn't for you. I never could have felt his presence. Oh, you don't know. Like I know that I'm getting close to him right now. There was a time you couldn't do it. You didn't have a chance. But today we can. God wants us to overflow with joy as we get closer to him. Rejoice when you serve. Rejoice when you sing. Rejoice when you get closer and closer to God. That's when you're, I'm getting closer to him. First Chronicles chapter 16 Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory, do unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. These are things we're admonished to do to get into his presence, to draw closer. As a biblical backdrop, we have to understand the first Chronicles 16 and 15 is, 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 is an amazing story I preach from often. And I just enjoy this one. David had gathered, and I, I believe he gathered them rather excitedly. I believe he was he got his act back together, and he's he's just, he's gathered the Levites and the priesthood for the monumental task of bringing the ark back to Jerusalem. After letting the Levites know that they were to carry the ark on, upon their shoulders, he then spoke to the chief and the Levites and asked that their brethren be appointed as singers who would play loudly with instruments, raising sounds of joy. Then after all the instructions were put in motion, the Bible tells us in 1528 of 1 Chronicles, Thus all Israel, can we say together, let all exalt him and all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the cornet and with the trumpets and with the cymbals, making a noise with psalteries. What's all the noise about? Worshiping God. Choose your noise. Choose your noise. Heaven's going to be filled with worship and praise, and hell's going to be full with weeping and wailing and gnashing. It. Choose your noise. At the heart of all this loud, joyous event was a unity that centered around the direction the king was taking the people, the leader. The king of Israel was worshiping the king of kings. When you think about it and what David is doing, it kind of reminds us of when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The fervor of the people began to wave the palm branches and shout, Hosanna! They didn't whisper. They didn't sit there. The, the believer people that were with him were shouting. They were, the only people that were like this were the unbelievers, were the haters. They were silent, angry, but the worshipers were, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Boisterous rejoicing and praise is inviting. Remember that statement when I get to the end tonight. The sound of joy is contagious. The sound of victory is overwhelming. There's something about the unified voices of people lifting up their voices. It brings about a supernatural response that is beautifully captured at the dedication of the temple during the reign of King Solomon. According to Second Chronicles 5, after the Levites were set in order and the singers and musicians were appointed, the trumpeters and the singers were as 
one and to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice in unison or in unity along with the instrument. So you know what? They was having church. The instruments were playing and the people were singing and they weren't doing it in a corner. They were lifting up their voices. They were thankful to God. You have to understand that effort brought a response. You see, some of us have gotten so arrogant, we just want God to do something and then we'll respond. Move, God, and I'll do what you say. I've done giving you a whole book of things to do. You ain't even done a third of them. How many things you've done everything in the Bible? And yet we pray, move, Lord. You move, Lord. Really? Man, I got a pretty good punch list of things I need to get moving on. But you hear what I'm saying? And one of them is, is every time we come together, and every time we gather, I don't matter what storm is going on outside, don't matter what problem, we've come and we're going to exalt his name together in unity because when you get together in unity, it brings the response. When we move, he steps in. Because when they did that, when they got in unity, when they got in unison with the instruments and the singing and all the people, the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. Did you get that? As they lifted up their voice as one to make one sound, to be heard in praise and thanking the Lord, the glory of God filled the newly erected temple. Wow. That was so powerful. That moment was so powerful. The Bible says the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house. Verse 14. It can still happen. It can still happen. I'm thankful. I, I, I want these young people to know you all. Don't, don't, don't set your praise down because it's Wednesday night. Come in here with it. Come in here with it. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hand. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let us exalt his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. God will respond. God will respond. God will respond. That unified, loud, noisy worship and praise attracted God so much, he decided, let me in there too. I wonder how some of us would realize a little bit tonight that if we got a little bit, got our worship back, not our praise. He said, let me back in there. Let me back in there. Let me back in that house. Let me back in. I'll come back and visit you at prayer time. Quit walking around jaded and start walking around joyful. The joyful noise. Now, while there is a place for the voice of mourning and repentance, maybe I'll deal with that at another time, but more likely that'll be at a funeral. There is a clear theme and purpose in the Bible that establishes the power of a joyful noise. Now, it's Wednesday night. I can't go through them all, but Psalm 66 and 1 Psalms 81 and 1, Psalms 95 and 1, Psalms 95 and 2, Psalms 98 and 4, Psalms 98 and 6, Psalms 101, all agree and call us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, hold on. Don't answer, but you may have had a bad day today. You may have cussed, flipped out, doubted God, did something to where he's just like, man, I am so sick and tired of your jaded backside. So I know how you can obey the Lord. I'm going to give you a minute to make a joyful noise because that's the will of God. I'm thankful today. I'm thankful today. Your mercy endureth for you. are a great God. You're a good God. You're a loving God. You're a merciful God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. I will lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
Come on. Hallelujah. Get it while the getting's good. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give me a high five. The first slap in Souls Harbor Church. Yeah. Why? He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter how young or old I am. It's a mindset. It's a lifestyle. It's a choice. Hallelujah. Now understand. That don't make sense to a lot of people. But neither does getting half naked and stand in some neon color at a football stadium in the middle of winter with people, do. You will do whatever it takes for what you worship. Some of you have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a hobby, but not his habitation. But why get all dead in here? Did I just say? Let me tell you something. If you know that's you, you better exalt his name right now. You better join in and wait a minute, God. Hold on, God. Let me rethink this. Time and time again, we see Israel shouting with a great shout. Ezra 3 and 11 in celebration of God and the events associated with God's glory, power, dwelling in goodness. It says, it says, and they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he's good. Wait a minute. I don't feel his presence, but he feels your bad attitude. He feels your sour spirit. You ought to do it and say, wait a minute, God, I, I thought myself right. I'm not thinking too clearly. For his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. They ain't even built it yet. They just got a foundation and they're shouting. They're running. They're excited. Yeah, we're moving forward. Now, you have to understand. You have to understand something. It's throughout Scripture at Jericho and understand this shout, because most of you know the story. If you don't, well, you'll be playing catch up. You have to understand the shout was punctuated by a previous time of extended silence. <laughs> a little sarcasm here. I wonder if some of you started shouting and worshiping, you might shock heaven. They're at Jericho. They're standing before impassable walls. And God told Joshua that on the seventh day, after six days of walking in silence, that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. Unity was the key. Obedience and unity was the key to this victory. And the shout was the means by which the wall fell flat. All the people shouted, whether it made sense or not. They just had almost a week of being catcalled at. Look at them fools. They're out there walking around. And, oh, man, look at them down there. What a... 
What are they doing? Who do you think you are? Oh, I'm so scared. You're walking around us again today. Come on. Listen, shouting, worshiping doesn't have to make sense. To it makes sense to me because it's I know who it's for. There is power in the obedience of a unified shout from God's people. There's something that happens. In 2 Chronicles 13, 15, as the men of Judah stood in battle against Jeroboam, it happened that as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass God smote Jeroboam. Maybe your victories hidden on the other side of your shout. So your victory as far away as your next shout. Well, I'm just a little too dignified now. No. You're too petrified to praise. Yeah. Psalms 5 and 11 says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. If your trust is in him, you're going to rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defended them. See, there's power in that shout. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just what God said to do. Praise is certainly a repetition wor word in the in the book of Psalms, and it's often connected to a call to action for the reader. There is a sound and an activity to praise. When we come here, it's just not, well, that's what a Pentecostal church does. No, that's what the Bible talks about. That's what it, I laugh at people, well, that's your truth. Wait a minute. I don't have a truth. Oh, no, 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 no. Let God be true in every man. I don't have one. I, 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 there, I, there's, oh, there's a million ways to God. That's not what he says. Well, that, that's kind of legalistic. That's a little bit. No, I think God loves everybody. He does. There'll be people in hell he loved. That is, he didn't love him back. He just granted them their request. That's how loving he is. You didn't love me. You want hell? Okay, there you go. As repetitious as praise is, it says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary, Psalms 15 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. You want to know how you're a servant? Praise the Lord, Psalm 135 and 1. When you take a look at this call to praise, we kind of find out that praise is often demonstrative and vocal. You can't make it your own way. I get it that my voice is going to be my voice and how I move, and that's going to be me, but Psalms 109 and 30, I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Psalm 47, 1, praise you, Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. I'm going to sing, too. Psalm 49, 1, praise you, Lord, sing the Lord a new song. Uh, Psalm 47, 6, sing praises to God, sing praises. Psalm 66, 8, oh, bless our Lord, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Psalm 49, 8, let them praise his name. In the dance. I can't dance, I'm gonna run. <laughs> if you go to Psalms 149, specifically Psalms 150, is a continuous call to the sound of praise with both voice and instrument. Okay, so when we arrive at the New Testament, be seated, this call to vocal praise has not been relegated to the the attic of the Old Testament. Hebrews 13 and 50. And, and mod, offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Aaron, look up Psalms 34 and 1. So in, in contrast to this call to vocal and demonstrative praise to God is the sobering statement from Psalms 115 and 17. The dead praise not the Lord. You know, physically or spiritually, they ain't going, they're dead. They ain't going to pray. You ain't, if you're dead, you're just not going to praise God. I'm going to praise God in my own way. What, really? Is, is God, did, did you just rewrite the entire, make a joyful noise?
You know, if we, if we said something to our kids and they didn't respond, some of you'd smack their head. Do you realize that God has spoken to you, given us an open door, of, and you're ignoring him? Do you know what it feels like when you're talking to someone and they're ignoring you? I wonder how many of us got God in that corner. And we think, we're going to do it. Let me, let me just put it to you out there. I'm going to be gentle. Humanity is arrogant. We're arrogant. It's our nature to be arrogant. We've always been arrogant. Go back to the God. Don't think you're not. Let me tell you what. If, if you don't do anything tonight, get in the altar and lay down your arrogance. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm calling humanity out. I get arrogant. I get, a I, I get ahead of my skis, so to speak. That's what we do. So when we get that way, what, what well, it's like men putting together a, the swing set or some pro They wait to read the instructions till they get all fouled up. That's a picture of humanity. Some of you sit here today, you haven't spoken in tongues in so long, and you throw out so many excuses. You haven't prayed through. You haven't gone beside yourself in word. You're wait, you need a, let me tell you, you don't need another word. You need to obey this word. You don't need someone to preach a certain message. You don't need a certain song. You need to realize he's God, and he's worthy of everything. He's not going to rewrite the Bible for you. He's not going to turn out, well, I get you're different. I'm going to let you. No. I'm the same. Change your behavior. Because when you won't, you're in your own way. Does that make sense? I've preached. Lots of different places here in America. I've preached overseas. I've observed so many different scenarios where people responded differently to shouting, singing, praising. And so many different forms of joyful noises, liberating expressions of thanksgiving. I've, I've seen lots of different things. Some of them were weird to me. But there was no denying that they moved in a way to let God know, I'm here for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's something that I don't know. Maybe some of you wouldn't press through a crowd of people to touch the hem of his garment. I don't know that some, there's some people you wouldn't get out of your seat to touch the hem of his garment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, 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 I don't know that some of you would stand to your feet if Jesus walked in here. Is that really him? Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've watched some people with handicaps do things that made sense why they did it that way. And then after seeing people that had many reasons to basically not be able to worship God physically. I've been in service where people have absolutely no physical hindrances, or so, but they were crippled in their mind, crippled in their heart. I've watched people barely able to move, lift a hand to worship God in a hospital. It's important to understand that God does not demand uniformity, but he does demand unity. I may never run like Christian runs. I may never be able to jump like Aaron jumps. I may not be able to do it like everybody else, but I'm telling you, when it's time to worship, everybody needs to be worshiping. When we come into his presence, you should be worshiping. When we're singing, you should be singing. When there's praying going on, you should be praying. Not uniformity, but unity. You better get with the program. You can't turn around. Well, it was 
And I want to, let me tell you one of the worst things you'll ever see is someone that when they're in the seats, they won't do nothing. But when they're up here, y'all, bless God, y'all better bust a move and act like the second. Let me get an amen from the ministry. Let's just stand to our feet and just love him right now. If today was your last day on this planet, have you said what you need to say to Jesus? Have you done what you need? Have you moved towards the Lord? I'm not done. I'm not done. Let me see that I'm going to finish this. I'm not making a series out of this. We ain't got no more gimme services. We're going forward. Unity is one of those words in the Bible that doesn't always sit well with the base nature of carnal people. Well, I'm just not going to agree with you. Then we are in disagreement. There are some folks whose ego and even arrogance has a greater influence on their life than God's enduring love, mercy, grace, and his presence. So they resist, they ignore, and they excuse away worship, obedience, and unity. While we know that unity among the brethren is considered good and pleasant. Some would just rather be unpleasant. It seems that it is something that requires effort. Everybody say effort. I got to put out some effort to make sure I'm in unity with God's people. Are yeah. oh, you hearing what I'm saying? Every, all the animals and everyone had to get on the ark. You couldn't say, well, I want to do this. I'm going to go get my own ark. No. I got my own little church over here. I'm going to. You don't believe me? Go see Ephesians 4 and 3. Aaron, did you get that verse? Christian, find Ephesians 4 and 3 for me. Go ahead and read that verse, Aaron. Here's, a, here's some help. You get mad? Okay. I'm not going to focus on that. God? Wait a minute. How many know that goes against how you feel? Am I the only one that that goes against how I feel? But how many knows that it helps me go the direction I need to go? So it's not about how I feel. So I got to change my what? Yeah, come on now. Stay in class. Come on, keep your head. I purposely change my behavior. It's some of us, it, uh, we indict ourselves by how we demand from our children, yeah. our Sunday school class, our right. grandchildren, our relatives. Well, bless God, it's this way. You need to change right now. And we sit in here. God ain't, God ain't changing. Pastor ain't changing. Word ain't changing. Spirit ain't changing. Read 4 3 for me. The unity of the what? Oh, yeah, we feel, we feel your disunity spirit. As pastor, I do. You strain at gnats and swallow camels. You're missing, you're missing it. How, how many knows this whole book entirely? Everybody over. We all need to come together in the unity of faith. So when we come in here, it's time to what? Exalt him, worship him. Listen, I'll tell you what, you be a worshiper, I'll be a worshiper. And all the other little titles we wear, let me worry about pastoring. You just get your act together right with God, let me worry about pastoring the church. 
You know, I mean, I, 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 I'm going to be the one responsible for what I do around here. You take care of what you're doing here. Hello? I may not do things just like you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Paul understood this whole, this endeavoring, this, this unity thing. He admonished the Corinthian church to speak the same thing. If you ain't got nothing good, I'll say it different. Shut your mouth. Because if you ain't got nothing but praise coming out of there, until you can praise me and worship in here, we Come on, I don't want to hear nothing else. Come on. Why am I why am I preaching like this? Because I, I like what's going, but in order for it to keep going, the last thing, yeah, well, but Yeah, these crazy kids, let's see how long they get. No, it's not about let's see how long. Let's help them keep it. Yes. If that while we help them keep it. Let's join them. Let's join them. Don't sit with your hands crossed. Let's join them. Let's get with what they're doing. I like what they're doing better than those. Paul dealt with something. He said, speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. The judgment to what? Let us exalt his name together. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth. Listen, unity's not easy. And all the married folks said amen. And all their children said, oh me. You can be seated. It takes work. And I've seen my share of disunity when it comes to this subject of music and praise and worship and church. And some people boil it down to personal taste and style when it's really supposed to be all about the Lord. It about you. You may not agree with someone how they're singing a certain song. Get over yourself. Hello? I, I remember church and watching a sour looking lady with earplugs in her ears. Always had, and I, I, I mean, I, I don't think I ever heard anything positive ever. Arm was crossed, a scowl on her face during worship service. Bless God, I couldn't do nothing right. Church was empty and dead and nothing going on. And I'm, I'm like, well, keep, get mad again because I'm fixing to do something until so, I'm going to keep moving until something moves. <laughs> Are you hear what I'm saying? There was a complaint after every service, every little thing I did. Oh, God, we couldn't even go out to eat with it. Oh, she didn't like anything. Everything was noise or you don't have to dance or praise like that. You don't have to shout like whatever. The, the irony was, believe it or not, is when she was playing the piano or when she, there were no earplugs and there were no. <laughs> so what was the problem? Same building, same piano, same church. Was it that the volume really was too loud? I mean, because if it didn't bother you, if it bothered you in the back, but it didn't bother while you was playing? Let's be honest. <laughs> Could it just be that the individual picked up a critical spirit? Somewhere on their journey past Calvary, and they literally forgot to let us exalt his name together. Make a joyful noise yeah. unto the Lord. Well, I don't know. Was was it a sermon she had found fault with? Was it was it stubbornness? Who knows? One thing always comes to mind when I think about situations and people like that. And, and David had a wife by the name of Michael, and from a window she stared at David as he worshipped and as he praised, and he was bringing the ark with the presence of God and moving forward as a people. And the people were shouting and, and worshiping, and there was a lot of fanfare. And 
Every six steps, David would sacrifice and David would dance before the ark and the singer sang and music was played and shouting was filled the streets as they heralded the return of God's glory to Jerusalem. Yet as that very ark, the very presence of God came into the city of Jerusalem, David's wife, Michael, better known as Saul's daughter, a failed leader, was looking through the window and saw David. and She despised him in her heart, despised. And she overlooked the worship. Dusty streets of Jerusalem, people were shouting and joy filled the air. It was a day of unity. Everyone was worshiping. Well, not everyone. There was one that, in the window. She was a spectator with spiritual issues. According to the Bible, when she saw David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart, 2 Samuel 6.16. 6, but later, after at David divided this, everything and sent everybody, you know, you got to take this home, folks. He goes to go home. And that same person who couldn't get up to worship could get up. It blew my mind. I, was, I got done with a service one time and I had some people trying to play music and develop where they, they didn't have any really decent music in a long time. And old lady that I'd never seen when I visited as an evangelist, when I was part nothing, come walking up and chewed me out. I never once saw her come to the altar. But she could get up and chew me out. And now every time I'm like, oh, God. Hey, I'm, not try I'm not trying to condemn her. I'm trying to point out, we better be careful. You can think you're so right in your spirit, but you're not right with the spirit of God. And you Let us exalt his name. If someone else is playing and somebody else is singing, somebody else is shouting, somebody else is, somebody else is doing something. You ought to be, you know what? I want to be unified in worshiping God, in praising God. It was no coincidence that she was barren her whole life. And David's response was vehement, rebellious resistance to her worship. He was quick and measured, and he, he, he reminded Michael, God chose me over your death. No, you don't think that was a pleasant conversation. Talk about his father-in-law, and that's his baby girl. Sometimes you better get an attitude about your worship because someone's going to yeah. die. I'm willing to let you go, girl. God's first. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You got some junk in your trunk. You better get to the car wash and the trash can. Because when we come up in here, we're about worshiping God. We're about praising God. When we got, he said, you know what? He said, the next time, I'm going to be more vile. I'm going to be, I refuse to let someone stop me worshiping God. I done messed up over there. I done made a mistake, and you're up in here getting all cute, despising my worship. Now, some of you better get excited about the fact you survived something that could have stolen your worship. You could have got bitter. You could be sitting on the wrong side right now, but thank God you're here. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, let us. I made it here. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to lift him up. God forbid that anyone in this room ever finds themselves on the bitter side of spectator. The takeaway of all this is, as we've seen, vocal praise, joyful praise, the power of a shout, all have a powerful place in the kingdom of God. Being in one accord of the same mind and spirit leads to and lends strength when we gather.
We see in Acts 2, it invites the glory of God to fall upon those with a mindset of unity. They weren't driving a Honda. They were in one mind and one accord. They came in with the purpose of, you know what? It doesn't matter the differences. It doesn't matter how you would do it. Or how the, the matter is, is we're all here to lift up the name of Jesus. We're all here in one mind and one accord. Psalm 34, that, but exalt his name together. If we do anything in here, exalt his name together. He can fix all that other stuff. He can take care of his house. How arrogant we are that we think we will. Uh, you take care of your house, but God can't take care of his. I think he's got it. I think he's going to be okay. I, well, I guess there's all a few of us here to think it. In Isaiah 52 and 9, those who are facing the wilderness moments were to break forth in the joy and sing in anticipation of God's divine assistance. In Romans 15, 6, and 7, Paul called us to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may be with one mind and one mouth, praise God. The world, the world, the world has sought to silence our beliefs. Satan has fought to silence our witness. The backsliders want to silence our testimony. Schools want to silence our teaching. Government politicians want to silence our truth. The last thing I want to be is silent. The last thing I want to be is quiet. The last thing I want to be is fettered by those who should be worshiping, who should be standing to their feet and pray, who should get behind the pastor, the church, and let us exalt his name together. Let's stand. We're the church of the living God. We have to stand together in unison, in unity, and conquer, conquer the mute spirit that wants to silence, praise, and worship. Jesus gave us a clarion call to worship and praise no matter what. In the face of trouble, sing, praise, worship. In the face of problems, sing, praise, worship. In the face of setbacks, sing, praise, worship. In the face of opposition, sing, praise, and worship. Paul and Silas. After they laid many stripes, if you had stripes on your back and you're bleeding, we can just leave that to Paul and say, you can be dismissed. Go home. Go to a doctor. But if you haven't, you really? That pain or whatever it is, is too much to do this? I got a torn rotator cuff right now. What's your problem? What's your problem? God, blow your fan and purge the floor. Let souls harbor. Have a revival. Blow out the disuse. Purge it. Clean it out. Get ready. We want worshipers. We want praisers. I want to be that kind of believer. I want to be that person. That whether I'm in a prison or a palace, I'll praise God. Whether I'm in wealth or poverty, I'll worship. Pain or pleasure, I want to exalt the name of Jesus. Because let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. See, see, you, 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 you think I'm all wet. You think I messed up, but hold on. Psalms 126 and 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, wherefore we are glad. Hey, has he done anything for you? Wait, 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 hold on. I, I, got, I got the young people. But worship's not just for the young. You ready? Oh, oh, that my mouth be filled. With God's praise. Psalm 71. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise. 
and with thy honor all the day. Are you listening? Come on, us old folks. Us older folks. You listen. I, 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 maybe not you, Sister Crystal, but some of us. Especially us that we kind of get the idea that maybe we got the corner on it because we preach a little bit. Or we had a position a little bit. Let me tell you, you'll never have a greater position yes. than worship and praising God. You got to find your worship. You got to find your praise. You got to find it. I don't care about mom and dad. You got You ain't going to go to heaven based on them. You're going to go based on you. You, you, you. you may have to go all by yourself. You, they may not follow you. You may go. But you got to go. You got to go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hey, all the old folks say, I'm ready. Cast me not off. In the time of old age. Forsake me not. When my strength faileth. Yes. 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 Tired. Comes with age. Hurt. Comes with age. But let me tell you something. This body's going to lay down. But I'm not going to let my spirit. It's funny what we'd say to do if someone wanted to hurt our children, our grandbabies. And there's a devil after your soul and you're going to stand idly. You condemned yourself with your own words. You're going to jump into action then, but you can't jump into action now. You deceived yourself. Remember Psalms 115 and 17? The dead praise not the Lord. The dead. Neither any that go down into silence. Can I tell you? I'm dying, but I'm not dead. Spiritually or physically, I'm alive. Yeah. Psalm 22, but thou art holy, O thou that who inhabitest the praises of Israel. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. I'm going to close with this. He messed up. He blew it. He found himself in a pig pen. And he deserved it. His own mind, his own thinking, his own ways put him there. Be careful that your own mind. That your own mind. Your own mind mess you up. Oh, I know better. I know better than my father. I know better than my heavenly father. He makes his way home. I don't know about you, how many put you as the prodigal in that story? It's really about the father. Get ready. Because this is supposed to happen. Because when he got home, they killed the fatted calf. They ate and went home. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. Because you know how come the old boy, the old brother got bad, upset? You know why he got upset? Anybody? Why? Why did, He didn't know that yet. That's good, but you know, come on somebody. Think, 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 think. Come on preachers. Why was he upset? Why did he start asking questions? Why do I hear the sound of music and dancing. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You haven't thrown a party for me. It's those that the father says, hey, we throw a party for the sinners that come home. And we worship and we praise and we dance and we shout and we exalt. We're so thankful for a father that lets us back in the house. So when we get together in the house, we worship, we dance, we shout. We're thankful that daddy let us back in.
God, he said, oh, come on. Let us exalt his name forever. You know why? Let me make it first. Because the likes of some of you would like some of us to be thrown out. Be honest. You ever got sideways with someone in the house of God? No? No? I wonder. Listen, listen, listen to me. How many sinners, how many prodigals, how many pain in the necks would come running to the house if it was noised around that there's a church here that always makes a joyful noise when we come together. That always exalts the, not each other, we exalt God. It's about Him. It's all about, it's not about who you were or what you are. Oh, it's about it. We all come in one mind and one accord. That presence will come in and visit. When we come in here for the purpose, I come to lift him up. I come to praise him. I come to let the high praises of God be in my mouth. Yeah. 